Look at Bill. Look at Bill. Bill, this was for you. Just for you, Bill. Thank you. <laughs> let, let me, Lynn, let me be sure you understand. When you put the mic at boob level, people are going to think Bill Harper's the next speaker. <laughs> Whoa! I, uh, I know a lot of you were here for my last appearance. What you probably didn't know is I was speaking hurt. Um, I had an injury to the ligaments around my funny bone. It makes it fam painful to uh, turn a phrase or to tell a Tennessee or Ole Miss joke. Uh, also, I've had some recurring issues with my left hand. That's the hand I use to keyboard the punchlines. So, uh, but I've, I've met with Coach Cotton before tonight's meeting, and I told him I want to be part of the Touchdown Club team and that I am fully committed. So I'm here, uh, Coach Cotton. Well, it's been a couple of weeks, but what a couple of weeks. Missouri is in sole possession of first place in the SEC East. South Carolina won a game in Fayetteville. And Ed Orgeron is the head coach. Of the <laughs> Father Veron, these surely must be the end times. <laughs> Coach Mullen, uh, great to have you with us again this year. I imagine that the pressures and stress of coaching a team in the SEC has got to be tough. And dealing with the demands and expectations of the alumni week to week must be exhausting. I suspect it's much like an extended conversation with Bill Harper. <laughs> Well, tonight you get a well-earned respite. So sit back, relax, and remember, you're in the warm embrace of the Memphis Touchdown Club. Just think of this as your circle of trust. Tough game with Bowling Green. Uh, but you beat the Falcons 21-20. Now, a lot of unsophisticated fans may think the team was looking ahead to next week's game with Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the Bowling Green is pretty good. Coming into the game, they were 5-1 with a lost Indiana. They'd beaten Kent State, which won the MAC last year, and Liberty Bowl champion Tulsa. And they'd also beaten the, uh, the minute men of UMass. Uh, but given the size differential, that would have been expected. <laughs> Got to think through this stuff. <laughs> I was, uh, I was excited to read that Saturday at Starkville is a whiteout day. I assume that uh, honors Betty Nesmith Graham, the Dallas secretary who invented liquid paper and was also the mother of singer Michael Nesmith of the Monkees. <laughs> <laughs> Ole Miss uh, had an exciting game with Texas A&M Saturday in, uh, night in Oxford and almost won, so I guess watching how close the Rebel Bears came to winning that you've already figured out how to defense Johnny Manziel. Really, is this thing <laughs> okay, there, there may be trouble at Alabama. Uh, of course, Alabama's won three of the last four national championships. That gives Alabama the same number of BCS championships as NCAA probations between 1995 and 2012. <laughs> now, just a year removed from probation, a Crimson Tide assistant strength coach has been placed on leave after it was discovered he loaned $500 to junior ha-ha Clinton Dix. Now, you guys should listen up to this. Per NCAA bylaw 16.11.2.2, university employees are not permitted to provide cash or loans of any sort to student athletes because it is considered an impermissible benefit. Roy, did I cite that bylaw correctly? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the Alabama Compliance Department self-reported the, self the violation to the NCAA enforcement staff. The good news for Alabama fans, under a special pilot program between the SEC and the NCAA, any penalties or sanctions for violation will be assessed against the University of Memphis. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Now, off the record, Alabama coaches have pointed out that this kind of thing never happened when the players were allowed to sell books. <laughs> really, what, what kind of world do we live in? What would Logan Young have said about a world in which a $500 loan is even considered a violation? <laughs> There's, a, there's also trouble on the left coast. I'm sure that many of you were dismayed at the abrupt and possibly unfair firing of former volunteer head coach Lane Kiffin. <laughs> I know I certainly was. Uh, Kiffin was removed from the team bus and fired by Southern Cal after losing in Arizona State 62-41. The team was advised of the firing by a text message from A.D. Pat Hayden and a rap video. <laughs> Coach Orgeron was later informed through an interpreter. I know this will be of interest to some of you Tennessee fans, although uh, Coach Kiffin is out, it appears that uh, Layla Kiffin will be retained as tight ends coach. <laughs> <laughs> Latest uh, reports indicate the NCAA is holding Kiffin in solitary confinement at Guantanamo Bay. <clears throat> and what many see as primarily a prophylactic move, the Trojan nation is now being asked to rally behind new head coach Ed Orgeron. <laughs> Southern Cal did not reveal whether Orgeron would receive a salary adjustment as interim coach, but did report he would receive a substantial clothing allowance, primarily for shirts. <laughs> and uh, Coach Orgeron coached the team to a victory over Arizona last Thursday, leaving him just nine wins shy of tying his three-year record at Ole Miss. <laughs> Back to the SEC, uh, Tennessee has had an extra week to prepare for its next opponent, and during the open week there has been a lot of nasty rhetoric back and forth in the newspapers that I suspect will wind up on the bulletin board in the Tennessee Department of Music. <laughs> Forget Alabama, it appears the ball's most bitter rival is now the Tennessee pride of the Southland Band. As Pogo said, we've met the enemy and he is us. The football team and the band are at odds over several issues. Uh, one, the band has been told not to play the alternative Tennessee fight song, Down the Field, and they don't like that. The athletic department says that Down the Field is just too similar to the alternative Ole Miss fight song, Down the Hatch. <laughs> The, uh, the band says their funding has been slashed. Uh, the athletic department series says there has been only a modest reduction in funding, which will be restored as soon as Tennessee is back to a position of paying only one head football coach at a time. <laughs> and finally, the source of the most friction, the band is unhappy that their new smoky gray uniforms were diverted to the football team before the Georgia game. <laughs> A big week in the SEC, first time ever, eight of the 14 SEC teams are in the AP Top 25 this week, so let's hear it for the SEC. Again, that's never happened before. Uh, before the meeting, I challenged Bill Harper to tell us how many SEC teams are not in the uh, AP Top 25, and Bill has promised an answer by Wednesday. <laughs> And, uh, and, fi and finally, I'll be in Nashville Saturday to see Vanderbilt's game with Georgia. Uh, Vandy has not won a conference game this season, uh, but they face an injury-riddled uh, Bulldog team, so we'll see what happens. Vandy's problems has, have been as much off the field as on the field this year, and their open week was no exception. The Tennessean reported this week that there are deep divisions on the team over whether Janice Yellen is the right choice for Federal Reserve Chairman, <laughs> and whether her soft monetary policy will help or hurt the recovery. <laughs> and there apparently is also a growing malaise over declining world commodity prices, particularly gold and copper. So good luck to the Commodores and the Bulldogs, and I look forward to seeing all of you Wednesday. Good night. <laughs>